Hello, I'm Mitchell Ryan Darcy, and here is the best and worst movies that I've watched for the first time in 2017. Yeah, it's a top 10 list, finally, something different <laughs> on this channel. Anyways, a lot of people have been saying it's like, oh, this was the best year for movies, and then a lot of people are like, this was the worst year for movies, and it's like... Every year there's going to be good movies and bad movies, okay? Oh, uh, looking at my script. This year, in 2017, I've watched a total of 90 films, all of which were for the first time. And out of those 90 films, 61 were not released in 2017, and 29 was released in 2017. It's not as many as I wanted to watch, but, you know, there's always next year. Uh, <laughs> and just to compare, the uh, total number of TV shows slash seasons I watched this year was only two. Only two seasons of two shows. Ah, I have so many TV shows to catch up on, it's ridiculous. Anyways, so how it's going to work is I'm going to be, not only will be doing a top movies I saw in 2017 that were released in 2017, but I'm also doing top 10 of the movies that weren't released in 2017. I'm going to start off with that because that's not the list everyone's been looking forward to. <laughs> How it works is it's only from the movies I've seen. There's a lot of movies that I have not seen. For example, uh, I haven't seen the new Star Wars movie uh, and a lot of other movies. For example, how this list thing is going to work is that, for example, if I did the TV shows, Best and Worst, I only watched two. So I watched season one of uh, A Series of Unfortunate Events. Oh yeah, Ruby, Volume 4. Those are two series that I watched season-wise. So if I had a list of the best shows that I watched, those two would both be on the list. Now, technically, because if I did a top two of the best and top two of the worst, technically, since those are the only two shows I've watched, even though I think they're pretty, really good, they would also be on the worst list, just because there's nothing else worse than the ones I watched, because I only watched two good shows. The less I watch, the more skewed the thing is the more I watch the more better the accurate the best and worst list is so don't complain if there's a really good or a decent movie that made the worst list and vice versa with the best I'm starting off with the movies that wasn't released in 2017 but I saw for the first time in 2017 before I can get to the best of the movies that weren't released in 2017 it would be good to compare with the worst. So starting off with the worst, in fifth place, best of the worst, I guess you could say, I had to give it to Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. <laughs> like, I kind of knew going into the Sleepaway Camp series that it was going to be bad. And the first one just had that twist and sort of some of the camera shots really sort of elevated what it was. Um, and the third one, I actually kind of liked, strangely enough, just plot-wise and just how... <laughs> just the, the reaction between the characters and all that, I think, was just really good. The interaction and all that. So, the second one, I just was definitely the worst of the three, in my opinion. I never saw the fourth one fourth one's unfinished but anyways so i had to give sleepaway camp to the fifth spot particularly there's some errors with just timing of blood effects like the first like kill of the movie and it's like it's so sloppy and just you can really tell it's like they couldn't do a retake of that or it's like questions like that so oh yeah and then there was that unnecessary flashback scene uh, and recap of the entire movie but anyways in fourth place, for worst film I saw for the first time that wasn't released in 2017, was I had to give it to White Noise 2, The Light. The funny thing is, this was actually a 
decent movie. Um, the problem was it they labeled it as a sequel to White Noise. If this movie wasn't labeled as a sequel to White Noise, and let's say it was an original horror film on its own, uh, this film might have been more well received by me. But after seeing White Noise, and White Noise was a good film, then seeing White Noise to the light, and just seeing what they changed, it like doesn't even match what the first movie was in terms of powers and all that, and just what it was. So it just overall left a bad taste in my mouth. It's just, it went in places that it's like, this is really interesting if it wasn't part of the White Noise franchise. So I had to give it number four. Number three is Cell, based off of the Stephen King novel. Samuel Jackson and John Cusack, great fun seeing them working together uh, after uh, 1408, but the best part of Cell was probably the opening whenever, when everything went to crap with the airport scene, but it's just, as the film got prog progressed, it got, after the halfway point, it just sort of went nowhere in the sense of where was it supposed to go. The ending was very weird. <laughs> and I usually like weird endings. I like things that stand out and all, but it's just, it was like, why, why did they show that previously and now they're showing this? And so it's like, what happened? What happened? It's, it's, yeah, so I, I had to give Sil Sel in third place for third worst film. It's the second worst film that wasn't released in 2017 that I saw for the first time in 2017 is A Better Tomorrow Free. Love and Death in Saigon. I I loved the first one, and the second one was great, but the third one, I mean, it was an interesting idea doing a prequel, but it just, I think it really fell flat. Um, I think there was like one or two slightly good moments. But they're just overshadowed by just how bland and pointless <laughs> the rest, most, or most of the film was. So, really, I mean, it's nice to see the film once, if you can get through it. <laughs> and then after that, uh, never watch it again. I mean, the action was cool, but it was just, it was, it, I mean, it's done to death at that point. Uh, if you watch, especially if you watch all three in a row, it's just... It was really bad, I felt. Okay, now here we are. Number one is I gotta give it to Nailed slash Accidental Love. You got a great cast, and you got the director who did Civil, uh, Silver Lines Playbook and uh, American Hustle, and this is what you get. It's like, so after doing those good films, it's like, you think this film would have been more of his earlier work, and then he would have done Silver Lines Playbook and that, but it, it's so weird that this movie came out after those movies, and it's just, it's, the whole movie is just so bad. I mean, when you get into it with the whole nail on the head, and it's just, it's just so many bad choices, and... The, the, you can tell the cast is doing the best they can with the script, but it's just nailed. If you want to check out how bad that film, that's that's the worst film I've seen this year. Um, I think that beats the worst film of 2017 that was released in 2017. So I'm going to have to say Nailed is the worst above all. Uh, especially the fact that its name has changed tells you it's like, is it Nailed or is it Accidental Love? Well, it depends where you are, and it depends on marketing. So, uh, check out that film if you really want to see what I think is the worst film I saw this year. Anyways, here are some honorable mentions that were bad, but wasn't bad enough to get onto the list. And it's in alphabetical order, so Fifty Shades of Grey. It is a bad film, but I, I, I kind of, it was so, it, I felt it was so bad it was good. Like, in the sense that there's some lines in this where I'm like, I found that absolutely hilarious, and it's like, this movie shouldn't be hilarious, but it, it somewhat is kind of funny, and I actually enjoyed 
uh, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is the best part of the film, and that's it. <laughs> so it, it deserved an honorable mention, but unfortunately I did actually slightly enjoy Fifty Shades of Grey for how bad it was. Uh, but it wasn't bad enough to make the list. Uh, next up is Jason Bourne. Really bland. I never really liked the Jason Bourne, like, the first one or, like, the series in general. What I did like about the series was the second and third movie and just how it was intertwined and the story and all that. I think second and third was amazing. And then it's like the fourth one was drastically different. I'm like, okay, I, I can deal with this. This was just passable, above average. And then the fifth one, they're like, oh, the, even the director has said out loud, they're like, we don't want anything to do with the fourth one. Uh, Jeremy Renner's character is just, who cares about him? So they abandoned that whole thing that they spent the entire movie setting up. And my hopes for the fifth James Bourne, uh, <laughs> James Bourne, <laughs> but the, uh, my hope for the fifth Jason Bourne movie was to have Jason Bourne team up with Jeremy Renner's character. Wow, I don't even remember his name. <laughs> I mean, just imagine Jeremy Renner and Matt Damon kicking ass and taking names. Like, that should have been Jason Bourne, the, the fifth movie. But or I still have a little bit of hopes for the sixth movie if they do that. But I don't think they're going to do that. So because of that, I had to give an honorable mention for worst movie. Finally, The Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death. Love the first one. For Woman in Black, but the second one was just the only interesting about about it is the 40 year gap between the movies, and even then they did take some advantage of the 1940s era, era. But other than that, they wasted everything else with the jump scares and horror and just everything that was good about the first one. Yeah. Time for the top 10 best movies I saw for the first time in 2017 that wasn't released in 2017. So number 10, John Carpenter's They Live. It is a really enjoyable film. I just thought it was very neat just, just stylistically how it was done in the sense that it's like color and then through the glasses you see the black and white and you see them they <laughs> i it brings back it's like the 1930s or 40s or whatever day the earth stood still black and white sci-fi type film but with the 80s and it's like i really enjoyed it cool names a couple of cool action scenes uh and some surprises that i wasn't expecting in the sense of story i'm like i'm still sh kind of shocked about the way it ended so uh number nine the little prince now this was a very interesting movie just in the terms of story and it felt really original and it's like it does it didn't even feel like it was based on anything just from how crazy it was just overall story wise and then you got i think three different if I remember correctly, three different types of animation throughout this film. It was really inventive in just how they did that story. You got a really good cast, voice-wise, and cool characters. It just, it was a very nice film, just from start to finish, and I just really liked how original the overall story was. It was so different of an animated film, and so I, I liked it. Number eight, the very first movie I reviewed as on YouTube was Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I'm still surprised what they did, considering the fact that Disney owns Star Wars. Great cast. I think it was a, I think it was a really good story. It's a really good prequel, and for the Star Wars series, uh, a really good prequel is amazing. <laughs> Rogue One is definitely the best prequel of the Star Wars movies. That's not a TV show. Or animated. Number seven. Duel. Steven Spielberg's first film, technically. Made for TV, but then later shown in feeders. Duel is 
how to do suspense on such a small budget. It just, it's, it's like, it's so great. Uh, start to finish, it hooks you in. Even though it's, it's amazing how you can drag out something so, so, so like, minor of event story-wise and just make it so, with stretching it so much for the full hour and, I think, ten minutes the movie was, without ma feeling bored. And, like, you're never bored with this film from beginning to end. A really masterful, um truck stop diner scene that is just brilliantly well i think it's i think it was brilliantly well done especially for a first film uh yeah duel number six they were showing this in theaters as part of the classic movies um so i was like oh good i've never seen this movie i should check it out and that is the graduate with dustin hoffman this movie was very well done uh and i'm actually kind of surprised this movie came out when it did i think it was early 70s just given the subject matter and all that it was just i was like but then again i kind of remembered this is the 60s and 70s we are talking about so actually i guess nothing was really <laughs> off limits in terms of film but yeah i was still sort of just surprised overall film wise great Great performances, really great editing, and just camera shots. And though I didn't like that they reused some of the songs several times, I think that sort of just makes that movie just that much more iconic, uh, reusing the same song. So it's... Hello, darkness, my old friend. Kind of makes that song iconic to that movie, so yeah. Number five is The Big Short. I really love these types of movies. This should be sort of a new genre of movie where it's like just explaining stuff to the audience. And like this movie and Wolf of Wall Street, it's like it's like the best version of a presentation of life and events and like information all at once towards the camera. And I just really love that sort of style and it's just it's edited really good held up by a great cast amazing you got ryan gosling uh steve carell um christian bale and russell crowe and it's just really well done put together yeah i mean 2008 housing crisis was absolutely horrible and it's just it's definitely uh, this movie definitely just it sort of showed the absurdity of the whole situation and all that and just how it came to be and well as seeing points of views of different people of that event and it's just I think it was really well done definitely deserving of the fifth best film that I saw for the first time that wasn't released in 2017 number four John Carpenter's Escape from New York you know, hearing about it, it's like Escape from New York. And it's like, just in general, with seeing him with the eye patch and that, uh, this is before seeing the movie, it's like, I had a lot of expectations for the film. I was expecting, you know, spectacle, epic, um, big budget thing. But what I didn't realize is John Carpenter's style of films and all that is he makes big budget spectacles out of low budget and he does it so well that the fact that he was able to make you think you're in a world where the entire state of New York is now a prison it's like wow the fact that he's able to pull that off and the whole absurd plot about the president getting cra planes crashed and then he has to go rescue him. he gets sent in to rescue him by a certain time it's like so crazy i didn't think you you would be able to pull this off especially back then and and john carpenter does it flawlessly a really cool not exactly how i expected it just overall but by the end of it i really enjoyed it thought it was great number three uh the best anthology movie i think i uh, i've ever seen cats i uh, based off the i think short story 
Anyways, it's something Stephen King wrote. <laughs> I, I, I loved it. I, I knew going into it it was an anthology film, but I didn't think I didn't think anthology films could be done so well from beginning to end. Because usually when I see an anthology film, there's always one of the stories that's like I didn't like or I didn't like how they did it and it didn't really work. Um, but all three stories that they told for well actually technically four, all four stories that they told, all of it was great. And it was all pieced together by one story and it just, I loved it from start to finish. Um, and my biggest complaint was the film that I wanted to see more of these stories. Like I wanted to see it continue more. I would have, because of how well done it was, I would have saw an hour long film for each each short story just <laughs> that's how well it done it is it left me wanting more uh, definitely would recommend cat's eye if uh, you haven't seen it so here it is number two of the top 10 best movies that i saw for the first time in 2017 that wasn't released in 2017 number two is ghost in the shell the original anime film I can definitely see why this is sort of a masterpiece of anime and just in storytelling in general. I can see why this is the film that started the whole um, Matrix and like other sci-fi. Like if it wasn't for this film, Matrix wouldn't have been the Matrix as much as it was and it's like... It's like we would be in totally different world movie-wise if it wasn't for the original Ghost in the Shell. And it's so easy to see why when you watch the actual film. Really smart. Um, I really love their use because in anime, um, to avoid, you know, doing the lips and all that and, and working, uh, it, like, it requires more time and effort to animate things. Um, there are several moments where it's like monologues and you it even realize just from what they were showing you that they were not, <laughs> they were doing as least amount of anime work as possible, but it's just, it's done so well. Uh, it's just a really, really well done film. I just love the sort of the, the pace of the film, especially the fact that that three or four minute scene where it's literally just landscapes. And I think it's in the middle of the film, too. Like, that could have very well have been intermission. But at the same time, it's like you don't want to miss a single shot of just the overall city and the world of Ghost in the Shell. And it's just really well done film. Number one. Best movie I saw for the first time in 2017 that wasn't released in 2017 is... Moonlight. Oh, wait. No. La La Land. My mistake. I I'm sorry. I, I, I had to do a La La Land Moonlight joke. Okay? Forgive me. I haven't seen Moonlight yet, so I can't actually say if it's a good film or not. But La La Land is the one that I did see. Saw it in theaters. Amazing. Oh, man. IMAX. I was the very last showing of IMAX. For La La Land. Oh man, I love this film. And I saw it with my mom and my friend and and my friend, he just he's absolutely obsessed about the film and I'm just like, yeah, I know, right? It's just I I <laughs> I know a lot of people it might have been a little bit overhyped, but it's just I I loved it. I loved I like musicals, okay? So if it was a if it, if it wasn't that great of a musical, I wouldn't be raving about it. So Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, the chemistry is off the chart. Uh, even though they've this is not the first time they starred opposite each other in a film, but just this film it just works so well. Uh, Ryan Gosling, his face reactions are just so well done, and just timing and what happens and whatnot, and yeah. And I'm still sh surprised for a musical. It actually went the way it did ending-wise. Um, it was totally unexpected. And I think that's what may elevated, help elevate Ella La La Land above just an another musical, you know. That was the best movie I saw in 2017 that wasn't released in 2017. 
Uh, here are some honorable mentions in alphabetical order. 42, the Jackie Robinson story. Really well done. Just overall, just character drama and just sports in general. I don't, I haven't, I don't watch a lot of sports movies, but I, I need to sort of catch up. And uh, 42 was just overall a great movie from start to finish. I also saw A Better Tomorrow. That one I had to mention just because I, <laughs> John Woo is one of my favorite directors and A Better Tomorrow is a really well done crime film. Assault on Precinct 13 is not as good of a film just overall, but it's definitely a cult classic and I can definitely, like it does have its moments and the great soundtrack, the boot, the just the theme, do -na 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 -na, like John Carpenter, um, I think that was the second film, I might be mistaken, but um, yeah, Salt and Precinct 13, I kind of had to mention. I also saw Awakenings, Robert De Niro and Robin Williams. It just, this movie, it's kind of proof that based on a true story, it doesn't have to be someone everyone knows or something like that. It just, you can, you can find really, you can make really good movies out of even stories no one's ever heard of or uh, I think it was based on a book about a uh, true event that happened one summer. It's like such a minor thing in the history of the world and all that and as just seeing it in film, it's like, I would have never known this sort of little event happened. And um, it was really well done and just <laughs> great acting, okay? Dreamscape. I was shocked that this turned it turned so much into a political thriller uh, in certain moments. The fight scenes were actually, it was like, it's kind of crazy. Like, the dreamscape scenes, it's like, <laughs> uh, really creative, I think. Uh, really well done. I had to mention it. Uh, another one I had to mention was The Editor. The Editor, um, even though I haven't seen a lot of those type of films that it's kind of spoofing or parroting or being in the style of, I still got the general of the film and I think it's, it's just, it's, I kind of want to watch it again because it, it's just, it's purposely bad and moments and stuff like that and it's just, it was overall just a really memorable uh, murder, a little bit of mystery, comedy, and oh my gosh, that chase scene. Uh, um, and then, uh, well, talking about horror movies, uh, Stephen King's It, uh, the original It, I definitely had an, uh, had to honorably mention. Really standout moments, uh, just overall, and just horror and how they did it. Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown. I mean, we we may have the new dancing Pennywise, but but Tim Curry, just overall, his voice and just how he went around doing things on the old original it, I, <laughs> definitely a best movie that I had to mention. And then also a drastic change in films, uh, the Peanut movie really captured the spirit of Charlie Brown movies in general really well done uh just animated overall wholesome fun for the whole family uh i think it really captured charlie brown uh especially for a cgi film because uh charlie brown has always been 2d in that um so seeing him in the free d free dimensional uh cgi it was uh, they really kept it faithful i think to the original material holtergeist uh remake yeah, even though it doesn't hold a candle to the original Poltergeist, I still liked this version well enough that I had to sort of mention it. Wes Craven Shocker, that crazy film. Oh my gosh, I uh, loved it. Is uh, <laughs> you can definitely tell this was made by the same guy who did Nightmare on Elm Street. Such a crazy plot, crazy action scene. Uh, one of my favorite green screen edits or blue screen as I've seen fight scene wise like going through different TV channels like oh man uh, definitely definitely check this one out um, <laughs> if you like if you like horror definitely yeah 
yeah, some really really good moments in Shocker. Absolutely. Had to mention it. Uh, another horror film that I had to mention, finally, for movies in 2017 that I watched for the first time that wasn't released in 2017, uh, is The Witch. The Witch? Great atmosphere, great location, and just uh, some of the best children acting I've ever seen in a film, period. Just totally was just really well done and it's, it's really memorable it's a, it's absolutely a memorable horror film oh, okay so that was the best and worst movies i've seen for the first time in 2017 that wasn't released in 2017 so thank you very much for watching have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this have a nice whatever thanks again for watching and Check out my other stuff if you want.